<laughs> hey, what's up, guys? It's Jay, more than after kill, and uh, today I got DJ Arcus on the Skype for you, and uh, we're gonna be talking about his new game coming out, and I'm gonna show you some of uh, some of what goes on with it. So, what's your new game called, uh, Mr. Arcus? Um, it's currently called Tactics Forever. Um, those of you who know about computer games will recognize the forever um, suffix. Uh, there's a very, very, very good game called Power Up Forever. No, well, it's called Mothership Forever. No, was it called? Let's, I, we should probably start again. I should actually Google the name of the game. <laughs> I think it was called Warning Forever. There we go. Warning Forever. So there was a very awesome 2D shooting up called Warning Forever. And in this game, um, you fought against like motherships. And when you beat the mothership, it then evolved to beat you. Um, so if you fired like missiles at it, it form anti-missile defences and if you attacked it from the front it would evolve armour on the front and the idea was that you had to vary your tactics um, and that was the very 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 basic starting blocks was that was this idea of building spaceships and stuff alright so uh, how long have you been working on tactics forever um, long time long long time it's about a year um, one of the things that uh, I do is I do a lot of land parties in the game uh, there's another game called Go Go Gadget, which one day I'll probably get into doing. And it, it's uh, the idea is that you design something locally and you submit it to the server, and then it runs on the projector at the LAN party. And this is the second game in that sort of uh, series of games. So it's been about a year off and on. And when I'm at LAN parties, I tend to just work on it then. All right, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, so you said this uh, came from about a PC game. Is this game going to be available on Xbox and? Uh... On the uh, um, PC, or is it just a PC only game? Um, well, the idea is to release it on Xbox Live um, indie games, most certainly. I'd like to release a PC version. Um, the main issue is that is I need to write a lot of network code to make it happen. Ah, uh, right. I would love to, though, absolutely. So you say network code? Are you trying to swap it over so you can play PC people against Xbox, or is that not possible? Uh, no, nah, Microsoft won't let us do that. But currently, all of the networking is based on the Xbox Live networking, so there's actually no way to um, play it on the PC networked, not on the internet anyway. You can play on the LAN, but that's really not much use. All right. Uh, so, do you have any plans for a release date for this game? Um, for those people who are following Fortress Craft, after 1.1 is my current plan. But that, that's really my entire plan. Um, it's not far off now. It's got a bit, but a bit of polish. It needs doing. It needs some tutorial work. But overall, it's actually pretty good. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna actually. I'm having problems with the uh, PVR and the screen share right now with Skype. So I'm gonna load up some uh, footage that I have taken the other day from uh, with the play testers and. We're going to talk about that. Okay. So, uh, let me just find it here in the uh, old video uh, file. Uh, so it's probably worth actually explaining what the game is because. All right, uh, um, go ahead. You, you got well, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I've received an awful lot of flack about 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 Fortress Craft, and people say to me, "Why don't you write original games?" and and usually they shut up when I point out that this game, this Fortress Craft game, they love so much is. Not in the slightest bit original. It has nothing original in it. Not one thing. As far as I'm aware, this game is actually original. Uh, I mean, one point I've made on, on my forums is uh, just because it's original doesn't actually mean it's good. So the point is, <laughs> not is it original, the point is, is it's good. But this is, as far as I can tell, an original game concept. So you develop spaceships out of physics components, um, and they then fight. And that sounds very simple, but when you take the fact that they're built out of about 40 or 50 physics components, each of which can be in one of 256 positions, and then you can rotate them, and there are trillions of different ships that can be built. Um, and then, they, then what you do is you develop your ship, you set up the AI, and then you, you set it free. You sort of set it off into the world, and every 24 hours, currently I might make that bit different, but every 24 hours you get a report about how your ship has done. And you earn XP based on your ship's performance. So if your ship is out there on the on the internet kicking ass, you'll earn loads of XP. Um, and if your ship is uh, not doing too well, you won't earn so much XP, and you need to go and revisit your spaceships. All right, and uh, there's a level of customization that comes with this game. I mean, uh, you have what armor, you have weapons. You can also customize the look of the 
uh, ship yourself, can't you? Like, oh yeah, I mean one of the cool things I like about the game is the uh, is that customization. So as you level up, you unlock the ability to rotate parts and then to colorize them. So all the missiles, uh, the missile trails are colorized, the engine fl- th- um, trails are colorized, and you end up with some really awesome looking spaceships. All right, uh, and how do the ships? Do you control the ships yourself, or are they, uh, you know, AI based? Is there any type of level of control there? No, um, you you can edit your AI settings. So you can say to the AI, right, I've designed a spaceship, and you can say this spaceship is designed to be at close range, or this spaceship is designed for high speed combat, and you you give hints to the AI system, but you have no direct control. The idea is that you'll you'll design your spaceship, you go, yeah, that's pretty cool, and you'll then log off do something else for a day or a week or however long, and then you'll come back and then you'll see how well your ship did. Um, And the idea is that whilst you're not at your Xbox, your ship is out there in the wild performing thousands and thousands of fights. Oh, so this is more of like like a fantasy football type of deal where you kind of just set it and forget it for a day and you come back and see how you did. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, thanks. That probably sounds. I was thinking of it more as Farmville, but yours is Far- definitely a cooler. Oh, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm not familiar with the Facebook scene, so Farmville. Uh, that, that's a great uh, analogy, you know, right there. But uh, so, I mean, the ladder is the stats in the battle in the game. I mean, is there going to be separate like uh, leaderboards for this game? Uh, yeah, there's, well, there's currently ten leaderboards for it. So as you level up, you unlock bigger and bigger ships. Now, the bigger ships, I think, have a little bit less skill involved. Because the bigger ships are just monstrous tanks with <laughs> bristling with weapons, shields everywhere. And it's like two battleships ramming each other. Whereas the little ships, you, you've really got to make every single credit count. Um, so you, you've got like different. It's a bit like boxing. So you go from sort of the lightweight category or featherweight through to the heavyweight category. All right. And uh, how long till this game comes out? When it's done, uh, I've learned my lesson. I'm never giving release dates again. You know, I, I understand that. Cause I a lot of people <laughs> um, I would hope about uh, Stab in the Dark, middle of September, maybe earlier. Um, I'm, I'm giving myself you know, quite a generous thing there, but I will say it's uh, when it's done. Uh, currently, it's pretty good. It's quite stable. It's mostly complete. Uh, after about slot seven, slot eight, the ships start getting really massive and a little bit unstable. Yeah. I so agree. hopefully we can uh, fix that a bit. But uh, I gotta say, with the the other playtesters and I, we've uh, we've been pretty addicted to this game. It's it's, it's a blast. And uh, before we get onto the uh, footage, I just want to ask one more question: Do you have any plans, like when this game comes out, to uh, have like expansion packs or add more weapons on to later on in the game, or is the game actually completely balanced to how you like it? Well, but the answer is both. Um, so right now, at, at this point, until release, I'm trying, unless someone comes up with an awesome idea, as I always say, mm-hmm. not to add anything. I said I, I have simulated 40, 50, 60,000 fights at, uh, um, at lands because um, that, that's, I, I get to watch them all. Uh, and so all of the weapons are balanced. And it's quite been quite amusing watching the playtesters. Because one of the playtesters is like, oh, torpedoes are rubbish. And I was like, <laughs> try them. And they try them and they're going, torpedoes are brilliant. Blasters are rubbish. And I explain, they're like, ah, blasters are brilliant. So the game is very balanced. Now, if it's a success, I, I, there's a, at the top of one of the files in the game, there's an enormous list of other things I want in the game. Uh, things like magnetic mines, uh, tractor beams, um, I want um, carrier bays that actually like swarm up fighters and bombers. Um, I'd like to have more AI modules to improve the AI in certain ways, targeting computers. But all of those things require a lot of balancing. So right now, it's it's done. It just needs spit and polish, and um, it does need some tutorial work to sort of explain to people how to play it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool, because I, I actually remember myself saying, oh, the mass thrower was rubbish. And then I slapped about four or five of them on my ship, and they completely decimate. Like, it's it's amazing. But uh, Oh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. And th- there's something really beautiful and um, uh, w- really, really, really awesome about watching your ship just take apart somebody else's ship. You just sit there going, yeah, baby. Go on, that's it. And your ship comes out completely unscathed, and the other one is completely ruined. And it's it's so much fun. It really, really is. It's it's a blast. So uh, I'm gonna start getting into a. Uh, right now, I'm gonna show you uh, 
my uh ch- my slot two footage right here, which is I named it Butt Scratcher from the Family Guy skit. It was just something fun. Uh, Good we're gonna, I like that. We're gonna watch it uh, go against a few of the other playtesters ship, and uh, you know we can talk about what's going on here and take it from there. Uh, right here, I got the uh, you know the screen right here where we edit the uh, things, the ships actually, and. I like to go with a bit more speed, so I rock uh, about seven or eight thrusters on each of my ships. That way, you know. Just to warn you there, you've gone with all engines. Now, all engine ships are very weak because the yes. engines are weak armor, you say. Yes, it's, uh, I, I go for more of the uh, speed approach, and that's just how I like it. Now, um, like Paul Thompson, he loves the shields. He, uh, he makes some very uh, crazy shielded ships, but... Uh, well, that's because um, he wasn't using shielded ships. Then I I like shielded ships, so I was completely uh, yeah. You would say your ship's running circles around the other one. Now. Exactly. That, that's what I love about it. Like I said, it's a maneuver and flee at certain uh, points, and see how it's just dipping all these uh, getting a little. Oh, but oh yeah, snapped it in two. Nicely done. <laughs> that's uh, that's what I like to do with this. It's awesome how you can you know take your ship and you know maybe you want a, a speed ship or a full tank ship. It's or what I like, we haven't even t- talked about yet. We'll see what yours. The buzzsaw. That that's amazing right there. Well, the buzzsaw came about because I was watching a lot of ships that lands just like cuddle up to each other. Oh dear, someone didn't join their ship up properly. Yes, it's that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the ships at the events were just like ramming each other and just sitting there. Well, you can see the, the physics in play right here. I mean, with him not joining the ship properly, you can see it going all haywire. Oh yeah, I mean that—that's where the game really scores. It's all correct physics. Everything is perfectly correct. I mean, you, if you angle the engines, it, you know, however you angle them, the ship will rotate or spin or sidestep or reverse. Oh, the the spinning uh, the spinning engines are uh, amazing. It's especially, I think it's a. Uh, you'll see later on. I think I have footage of a. Uh, if not, I'll throw it in at the end of your Roman candle ship. Oh, I saw that one, the spinning one. Oh, yeah, that's it's amazing. It's got colors and it's it's visually impressive for a two D game. I mean, even I mean, you don't see a lot of two D games that are visually impressive anymore. And I, I actually like the two D graphics. It's kind of a throwback. Yeah, well, it kind of needs to be. I mean, unfortunately, I mean, I'm I'm melting an entire hyper thread on the Xbox to get this many physics to run. I mean, this is more physics than most games would ever dare run. So doing it in 3D as well uh, was so difficult. Uh, so 2D really was the way we had to go. The debris and particle effects are uh, hilarious. Well, we like explode. We like cuts the ship and all the particles of the ship come out apart. Yeah. The uh, oh, it's a bit of a stalemate here. Yeah, this can't, I'm, can't actually, quick I'm gonna have to fast forward this. I have this on my uh, unlisted videos on YouTube. This is a uh, what happened was a uh, this is Andy. He's, oh, hold on. Uh, you, see the timer counting down? Yes. Six. Uh, when that runs out, all weapons start firing at double rate. Oh, yes. I'm, actually, I'm going to keep it on here because it's amazing. The mass throwers starts throwing everything. I'm out running all of his uh, torpedo missiles here. To... <laughs> Just as but, well. Uh, the thing was is uh, Andy has become sort of a rival on mine in this uh, playtesters group. And we've been competing our ships back and forth. And he always comes up with a ship to beat mine. So once that happens, I make a ship that will beat his. And we both destroyed one of our engines on each side. If you take a look there, there's a missing piece on both sides of ours. So, so our only turn to the right. Exactly. Yeah. Our 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 ships are evenly matched at this point. Like <laughs> they're just doing circles around each other, and it's actually pretty hilarious because it ends up, like you said, in an actual stalemate where we both blow up. So, well, see, there are there's quite a lot of things in place to stop that happening now. You have a lot of missiles falling, but you you are actually hitting him with something. But you can see the universe starts to shrink at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so the idea is that eventually your ships end up fighting in this tiny little arena. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean about the, the sort of the rivalry to game, and I found the same thing. I just kept on and on making ships just to beat one person. And um, there's just so much fun in doing it. It really, really is awesome. That's that would, that would it'd be interesting to see how this works out with a, a large group of people, like say ten, twenty thousand, because then you got like maybe the top twenty people all making ships to compete with each other, and I mean there's a level of competition there that you just don't see in other games like 
with the leaderboards and the physics actually in this game because it takes a lot of uh, a lot of playing around with that drone to uh, get your ship just how you want it. Yeah, I mean, something I would like to add, I mean, the, the codes in there for the land version is actually to organize teams of ships. Oh, wait, so you split apart. Oh, God, that is a lot of missiles going to hit you. Oh, my God. He got hit by my last throwers, so it, it worked out that where we were <sighs> up. That was really close there. That was an awesome battle. That, that was, it, it was epic. That was, uh, I, I, had to, I actually uploaded that so I could show Andy because it was just amazing how that worked out. And, uh... I actually have some slot three ship here. I'm gonna toss in, and this is a this is my overkill. I've I've designed this as a tough ship, a strong ship, but it's still fast. It doesn't have as many engines, but it's more of a ship to outlast some of the other ones. Because Aerojack, he has a really strong ship in slot three, and it's it's really competitive. Hmm. I I am thinking about some extra code to. Uh ensure only friends fight against friends because you really care about fighting friends yes that's a uh, yeah I, I like the rainbow colored missiles he's picked there yeah oh I, wait I, his ship's exploded into the, off across the universe yeah i can't even see his uh his core right here is floating around and uh he's gone into pieces from my uh like i said overkill it's got about like uh eight to nine blasters on each side it's actually a Pretty pretty beast. But, uh, oh, yeah, so, uh, but against a shield ship, you probably actually start having issues because you just wouldn't get through the shields by the time they start cutting you to bits. It's all, all a balance in this game. It's quite interesting because uh, you see a lot of ships that rely on speed or weaponry or shields and a good mix and a good balance nearly always uh, wins out. And uh, I don't know why I just selected Andy again. Uh, like I said, that's part of the rivalry. I wanted to make sure that... Uh, <laughs> it wasn't a fluke. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the same thing happens here, so I'm going to fast forward it to uh, Ironhead's ship, because his uh, his ship is an absolute beast. Which ship was that, sorry? Uh, I think it's called Ironhead. It's, I think it's Aerojack's other ship. And How is that? Yeah, this is... Uh, Universe, universe always shrinks on me and Andy. I gotta say, if, if to be honest, if you've got a good battle, it should shrink. Um, Andy has highlighted some stability issues with the ships that I need to fix. Um, if your ship gets flicked outside of the constructed universe, it should just start taking damage. Uh, here it is. It's Hammerhead. Hammerhead. Oh, that's mine. Oh, that's you. Yeah, it's oh, one of the demo ships. Absolute beast of a ship. <laughs> it's as if I've been playing it for a year. Yeah, I know, right. Yeah, I mean, to give you an idea, so so far, according to just the statistics, the playtesters have done just short of 6,000 fights. All right, here we go. It's a hammerhead. It's a, it's a lot of fights, and it's it's real fun, too, because, I mean, you just switch up your ship and everything goes crazy. I like the way, I mean, it, it does the, uh, it, it supports the thing that a lot of DS and PSP... Peer games, you can just log on and have a couple of fights for just five minutes, and that's it. You can just do little snippets, but that gives you progress towards the goal. Because every fight you watch, every fight you do, you get um, XP for doing. And this fight was actually interesting with you. Uh, I, I, I didn't know that was actually you as Hammerhead. But if you look down there, I, I split apart your ship, and you got like little fleets now running around trying to, <laughs> trying to kill me. And it's so hold on, has your ship got the engines on backwards, so it just tries to run away? Yes. My ship is a total defensive ship. It runs away, but my my uh, weapons are on the backside of it. So while it's running away, it's hammering you with a. <laughs> ah, you see, that's what the missile or the disabled missiles are uh, designed for. But the thing is, is I have no missiles on this ship. I'm pretty sure. I think I use the mass thrower and the blasters to. Ah, but I mean, someone with a disabled missile would knock your engines out. You see, which oh, stop uh, that uh, sneaky tactic. Ah, uh, I see. This is a uh, element. This is actually one of his better ships right here. He's a uh, employee in the use of shields, which uh oh yeah, we touched on. <laughs> that was brief. We haven't even touched on it. The shields. You also have like capacitors and generators that uh. Well, yes, yeah, so you can design shields that will take a heavy pounding for a short period of time. Um, uh, ones that for you know they'll take a, a like a small damage for a large period of time. Mm -hmm. You can customize your shields. You can. Uh, have bigger shields and smaller shields. You can you can really really customize the ship in just an insane degree. 
That's a uh, that's pretty amazing there. So I'm enjoying this game. It's it's a lot of fun. I I don't know if there's a lot of uh, people out there that have played any of these type of games, but it kind of reminds me of a like a a flash game that was out a little while ago called Bubble Tanks. But that one, you have more of a degree of control over top. Yeah. Uh, uh, the closest is a game which, amusingly, I didn't even know about until someone played it and goes, they go, wow, they go, this is like Captain Forever. And I was like, what? Captain Forever. I'm like, what's that? And it's a game where you, you fly a little ship around in space and you, like, drag components together while you're flying. It's quite cool, um, but has a lot of the same physics componentized shit then. I was like, bloody hell. Well, that's a that's a fluke right there, <laughs> but uh, that's a I have nothing to say to that honestly. It's I've never heard of uh, this game that you're speaking of. Oh, no, it's an obscure little flash game. The point it uses the forever suffix because forever indicates games that continually grow and adapt. There's a few of them. There's Warning Forever, Power Ship Forever, Power Up Forever, Captain Forever, and it's like and if you see Gaiden in a game or Craft, it has certain meanings about what the gameplay is about. True. Uh, if you actually watch the screen right now, me and Paul are just... We, we just duped it out right there. We had a pretty epic fight. That was very brief from my point of view. Well, it, it was brief, but uh, we just it was we just went head-to-head, just straight up, you know, beast mode. No running away that time. I, that's actually uh, coming down on uh, some... We're coming down on short on time right here, and I got a... We've gone through some of the footage. We've answered some questions. So, uh, why don't you uh, say what you got to say about the game, and uh, we'll end this video up. Well, I said the main thing to do is to point out. I said this is my sort of my relaxing project between horrible bugs and fortress crafts. It's coming along slowly. I'm not the only programmer on it. A friend of mine um, has been doing various bits and bobs, and I hope I hope people are excited about it. To my, to my mind, I'm more excited about this than I was about fortress craft because. I want to log on and I want to look at the, the ladders and see who is topping off the ladders. So uh, I look forward to it. All right. Well, uh, I look forward to it, too, because I've been play testing it for you. And uh, it's amazing. And I'm looking forward to when it comes out. But uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, DJ, for coming on the uh, show. And we'll uh, have you on again and talk about, some, talk about it some more before it comes out. You can let the viewers know about the uh, progress on it. Absolutely. I look forward to it. Thanks for having me on. All right. No problem, DJ. Talk to you later. All right.